and something told me in I, I almost heard a voice. Maybe I did hear a voice. I'm not saying I didn't, but I heard it as clear as we're talking now. And it said to me, it said, Tyson, do not do this. You're going to destroy your family's lives. Your kids are going to grow up with no, no father. You're going to make things very, very difficult. And I immediately slammed on the brakes and pulled the car over. And people say, before you die, you see your life flash in front of you. I didn't see no life flash in front of me. All I could think about was leaving the kids with no father and uh, they have them to grow up, grow up without me. So I pulled the car over and I, I could feel my heart beating out my chest. And I could feel tears coming down my face. At the time, I didn't know this was happening. I was all in erratic uh, mood. And um, I thought to myself, this is the first time I need to get help. Because I, I'd suffered with anxiety and depression from being a young boy, but never, never uh, was diagnosed, never went to see a doctor until I got to 28 years old. Um, so I went to see the doctor, and at first I didn't think the doctor thing was going to be for me. I wasn't um, convinced about it. And I went to see this doctor and I spoke to him. Um, and I told him about what was going on and all that. And, he's, I, and he told me that I wasn't the only person in the world who had these problems. Because at the time, when you're not educated on this matter, which I wasn't, I never had a clue about it. I just knew that I would feel down and I feel bad all the time, ill. And I didn't want to live. And he said, you need medication, you need help. And I was like, I'm all, I don't want any medication because my grandfather, he had medication and he never got off it. He was on it his whole life. He was addicted to medication. These um, antidepressant drugs or whatever they were. So I didn't want to take the medication. I was adamant that I could do it through training and a healthy lifestyle. And he said, I'm telling you, you're going to struggle without medication. I was like, no, I'm going to come and see you and speak to you uh, once or twice a week. And I'm going to do this through healthy eating and diet. And I believe it was um, 2017, Halloween night. Um, I went out, was dressed up as a skeleton, a glow-in-the-dark skeleton suit. Um, and I was, I was in a bar and I was feeling very down. And I, I was in, I was, it was a moment of madness and I was having a beer. And I thought to myself, for one second, I thought to me, I looked around me and I could see all young people at the beginning of their lives. And I thought to myself, what are you doing here? Go home right now. And I put the beer down and I left immediately. And I come home around about 8, 8 p.m. And, and Paris would usually expect me not to come home at all or come home at five in the morning at that time. So she said, who's that? I said, it's me. I'm going upstairs. And I went upstairs, I took the suit off and I got down on my knees. I was in my underpants and I got down on my knees at 28 stone in weight, 400 pounds. I was heart attack material and I was, I was crying out to God to help me because I knew I couldn't do it on my own. I knew that it wasn't possible anymore unless I wanted to get addicted to these drugs, these uh, antidepressant drugs and more medication. I, I knew I couldn't do it on my own. So I, I remember reading George Foreman's autobiography. And I remember that, that there's, a, there's a part in his book where he talks about he had a nephew who was very ill and he got on his knees and he begged God to help him. Um, and he was down there for a while. And I, I thought, he, he worked for George. It's going to work for me. So I got on my knees and I was crying out to God on my knees. And it, it felt like I was down there for an hour. But maybe I was down there for like 20 minutes or something. And I poured my heart out, uh, everything I wanted to say, everything I had on my chest, I let it all out in the room. I was in a dark room on my own. If ever someone had seen me, they think this guy's crazy, put him in an institute. <laughs> and I got up off the floor, even though I was 400 pounds, I felt like a welterweight. I felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders when I went down. But when I got back up, I was elevated. I was back. And, and I said to Paris, I called out to my wife and I said, Paris, she said, what? I said, tomorrow morning, I'll start the regain mission of becoming heavyweight champion of the world again. But she'd been used to me saying this. I was the boy who cried wolf. Every time I got drunk and had a couple of beers, I'd be shadow boxing in the living room saying, I'm going to be the heavyweight champion of the world again. So she never took it serious. But this one night, I'd not had anything to drink. I was sober as a judge. And I meant it with conviction. And she believed me.